You have control of this. This belongs to you. This is yours. You're the captain. You're the master. You're the foreman. You're the general. You're the head. Don't give control of this to nobody, especially the devil. Do not let Satan come in here and function and operate because he has one mission, to keep you off course, to make you not think it's possible, to make you think that God don't hear you. His job is only to destroy you, to make sure that you don't become what God intended for you to become. That's the mission of the devil. Now, if you don't believe in the devil, I, this conversation ain't for you. If you don't believe in God, this conversation ain't for you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people who are spiritually based. If you get control of this, that's why I'm telling you these two books. I'm, look, the, the, the best book you can read is the Bible. If you read the book of Proverbs over and over and over, it's the book of wisdom and understanding. It would really help your life, man. If you just read, I'm going to be honest with you, that's the only book in the Bible I've read cover to cover. I've only read the book of Proverbs. I've read some scriptures every now and then. I only know five or six scriptures by heart. I'm just going to be real with you. But I've memorized them five or six scriptures, and them five or six got me here today. I know a lot of people that know the Bible inside out ain't got nothing to show for it. You know why? Because they memorized it, but they didn't apply it. I have applied six scriptures to change my life. But these books that I told you about, the Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. You know what it does? It just teaches you how this works. Once you get this, y'all, you can change everything. Do you understand negativity? Let me just give you this and I'm going to walk away. Negativity, you can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative because I get mentally drained from my job at times. But to coat your mind from negativity, the way you can put a coating around your mind is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. I'm gonna show you how this works. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm tripping, I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel, in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop, just stop for a second. And start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have. Because what you have is substantial. You just haven't gone over the list and taken inventory in a long time. But the fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go somewhere and get yourself something to eat, that's another blessing. The fact that you can go and turn the key and call someplace home, that's another blessing. The ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you're beautiful, that's another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. I don't have a relationship with God because I'm afraid of burning in hell. I have a relationship with God because he helps me in my day-to-day -day living. I have a relationship with God because there, if there is an eternal place to go live, I want to go see it. I figure, you know, as long as I ain't trying to step on nobody to get to where I'm going, Look, you all gonna make mistakes. Everybody's a sinner in here. Everybody in here broken. Everybody need help. I need help. I'm broken. You need God fixing you some kind of way. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you got. You need God. But listen to me.
Don't you understand that that's okay? It's all right to have a relationship with God. Having a relationship with God is really cool. And you're looking at a street dude telling you this. But he changed people, you know. God changed people. If you followed my career any length of time, from the time I was back on the Steve Harvey show, all the way up through the Kings of Comedy, all the way up to 2005, you saw what my life was. But after 2005, he came and he got me, though. Because he got sick of me. And I got sick of me. See, you know what happened to me in 2005? I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was so sick of me. You know, y'all saw me on TV. Y'all saw this money I was making. I was miserable, man. I was at my unhappiest point in life all the way up to 2005. I was miserable. We was kings of comedy. The only time I had a good time was when I was on stage. The only time I had a good time, I was in front of the camera. I was with Sid and the boys. We was performing. When I got off that stage, my life was miserable, man. I was in a pain you would not believe. I was in an abyss, man. I was in a dark place. How? How in the world did I get here? I got here because of God's grace. My plight had overtaken me, and I was about done. But right when you think you are about done, don't he always show up? Can you name me one single thing God ain't bought you through? Can you name it? If he ain't bought you through it, he's currently pulling you through it right now. And you know how I know that's real? Because you're sitting in here. The God I serve, you can't put no limitations on him. If you just get out the way, he can show you something. He do miraculous things all the time. Why would you not want one of them miracles to happen for you? I'm sitting here for me to be here today. The dude that I was, it's a miracle. We pray little prayers. We pray stuff that we see a way to get. You, you're supposed to pray for stuff you can't see no way how you can get it. God is in the make your dream come true business. God is in the get your life together business. God is in the forgiving business. Don't let nobody fool you, man. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray and don't ever be too proud to pray because prayer, prayer changes things. Prayer changes people too. I wake up, I play music, I tell jokes. I wake up, I meet y'all, I tell some more jokes. (laughs) I get paid to play music Adult contemporary music. I play R&B. I tell jokes. And they give me a check. (laughs) That's, hey, Mary, can I tell you something? That's the most amazing gift. If you could change the way you wake up in the morning, stop saying, I got to go to work. I got to work out. I got to get this weight off of me. I got to go and meet with the people at the school. I got to deal with my coworkers. Change one word in that sentence and everything about your life changes. I get to wake up in the morning. I get to go to work. I get to go and meet with these people today. When you say I got to, you take all of your opportunities and all of your blessings and you wrap them up in stress by saying, I got to. You take all the stress off of it when you say, I get to. I'm telling you, it is an amazing game changer. I was sick and tired of being poor. I was just exhausted. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor, all my friends were poor, all my relatives were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. I was just like, wow, man, I watch TV. And I would say, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man, with lights all on them. And they had horseshoe driveways where you just pull in and go all the way around. I, that shit was amazing to me. You know, we would pull up in the driveway, got a back out. You know, I've been doing that shit. And I kept saying, I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. 
He said, but if you work hard, keep going to church like your mama say, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. That was it. My motivation was to buy a big house so I could put up Christmas lights and, and, and drive in the driveway. And I want to tell you something. Every home I have, every house I've ever owned or built, you got to pull in one way and drive all the way around to come out there. I have never built, lived, or owned a home that did not have that driveway with gates on both sides. Never. That was the biggest motivating. So my advice is you have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Now you're gonna think about quitting no matter what you do. I mean, I've thought about it many times, but I always just kept thinking about that house. And I've always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And you know, and before they died, I was able to do all of that. Bought them houses and everything. So get interested in your gift. It's, it doesn't matter what somebody else does. To find your way in life is not an external search. It's an internal search. Because God equipped you the moment he gave birth to you. God equipped you at birth with what you needed. He gave all of you a gift, all of you. Every last one of you, you you're gifted. God never created a soul without giving them a gift. All of you sitting in here were given a gift at birth. He put it inside you. You ain't got to look under the ocean. It ain't on a mountain. It ain't under no rocks. He put it in you at birth. He gave you a gift. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. That's the thing you should pursue. The scripture says your gift will make room for you and put you in the presence of important men. That's what your gift will do for you. Everything else you're doing has nothing to do with what God created you for. And if you're unhappy with your life, if you haven't figured your life out, if you're thinking there's more to your life than it is, it's because the only reason you have that question is because you're not living in your gift. Once you discover your gift, there lies your greatest chance for success. That's what God gave you, equipped you with. To be. You just got to quit looking at gifts as running, jumping, singing, and dancing. Babysitting is a gift. If you're a smart student, smart is a gift. If people come to your house and they, in your kitchen to get their hair done instead of going to a salon, you do hair. That's your gift. If, if they can't have a bake sale without your pies and cakes, you bake pies and cakes better than everybody, then that's your gift. You bake pies and cakes. That's your gift. You don't have to think about it. That's what you do. Quit trying to do what somebody else is doing because that ain't your life. You, you don't even want to come the way I would. You, if you knew the path I took to get here, you would not take it. If I done knew, the path I was going to have to take to get here. I would have changed my destiny a long time ago because there's no way I would have wanted to have gone through what I went through to get to where I am today. That's why God don't reveal it to you. See, God never re re reveals the path to you. He shows you what it could look like, but he don't show you the route because if he showed you the route, you will turn around. Everybody would quit. If you knew what you had to go through to get to where he had for you to go, you would all quit. I would quit too. It's no way I would have had a stuttering problem. It's no way I would have lived in a car for three years. It's no way if I knew that I, when I quit my job to do comedy, what was going to happen to me, I would have never quit my job. But he don't show you that. He just lets you have the dream. And if you're bold enough to chase the dream, he'll get you through the journey. You just can't quit in the middle of the journey because he know you're chasing dreams. God didn't make your dream come true business. That's real talk. I kid you not. You looking at somebody living his dream because God made it happen for him. That's real.